So today I've been trying to get stock prepped. I managed to finally clean the Clio again, get it videoed and photographed and all listed up. It does take time to go, go through all those things. As you can see, she looks brand new. Moved on to the Honda because I'm selling that with the existing MOT on it. So I don't want any more time ticking away on that. It was super clean when it came in. I got a bit dirty driving around, so I've given it a quick clean off. The things I wanted to do was I polished the headlights a little bit. They were quite faded and yellow at the top there, weren't they? I just gave them a quick machine polish. I haven't cut them back with sandpaper, but they're looking a lot better. The other thing I'm not too keen on is the sort of graying of the plastics here. So we're going to give the stuff we featured in the last video, outro, how are we pronouncing it? Uh, we're going to give it again, not sponsored content, just used it last time, worked really well on the Freelander, uh, not the Freelander, the uh, Land Rover, the Discovery. So we'll give it a go on this and see if it does the same job. Now, as many of you advised me in the last video who'd used this before, less is more, so you only want a little bit. And you do wipe it off afterwards, but I said in the last video I wasn't sure if you did or not, but you do wipe it off afterwards. So I'm loaded up a little bit too much there. I have to say, in less is more. So let's get it on here. It's just gonna make it pop. I know there's mixed feelings about shine on cars, but I'm sorry, I think the vast majority of people come and see a shiny car before they do a dull one. I know we should be all focused on mechanics, but when it comes to buying cars, people are magpies, really. They want shiny. So the shinier we can get it, the better. And I don't think there's any harm in a dealer taking pride in the stock and presenting it as well as they can, is there? Right. This, Get on and just do all of this and then I'll show you the finished product. Well, there you go. I think you'd have to be a particularly cantankerous old git to say that doesn't look a lot better. So just brushed it on and then wiped it off. So we're just going to go around the rest of the body kit and do the same now. So it seems the time spent doing those plastics was well spent. The car went up last night on Auto Trader and on Facebook and it sold first thing this morning. I had multiple messages about it. And yes, those that messaged me had seen the video and seen about the crack in the roof. So I've got that out of the way, up front, as always, simplest way, out there, up front, for everybody to see straight away, then you've got no arguments over it. So the people inquiring had already seen that it had the crack in the panoramic roof. So I didn't have to deal with that really at all i did something a bit interesting with the listing what i said was 3995 which is under order trader recommended with the six months existing uh, mot on the vehicle or 43 with a new mot on it bit risky because i don't know how much it's going to cost to get it through a new mot but i've offset some of the risk now the person that's bought it opted to have a new mot on the car for the extra 300 pounds so, you know, the thing is, locally, a lot of people just want the cheapest price they can get on the vehicle, and a lot of dealers won't put an MOT on a car that has six months or more MOT on it. So I put that option out there, but uh, I'm kind of pleased that they op went for the new MOT option. I'd rather do that, because, again, it makes more sense. If the money's being put into the vehicle you're buying, that's not going to go in my pocket. It's going to go into the MOT. So if it's put into the car you're buying, you're better off doing it at the beginning rather than try and just go to maximum budget, but without the car fully prepped. So yeah, he's um, just transferred me the deposit across for the MOT work to be done, and then he'll be coming and picking it up. So what we need to do is get cracking on the next one. It's like I said to you, I'm only able to really ever have like two cars up for sale. So all I've got at the moment is the Clio and the CRV because of the level of prep on them. It takes you know, an easy day to get them ready, if not more sometimes. So um, we need to prep another one now. So we've got something else up for sale. So what we're working on, we'll cover that in a second. What we're working on is the BMW. It's probably one of the more valuable cars, so I thought it could be a good idea to get this done straight away. So if you remember, this had the typical Devon rash all the way down the side from the hedges. So I spent the morning machine polishing. I don't think you needed to see that. But we've got all the rash out. We've got a nice shine all along the body. Well, before we did that, we uh, detarred it because it had a lot of tar on it. So that's little black dots you get all over your paintwork, normally around the wheel arches. That's road tar. So we used the anti-tar, cleaned all that off, had a wash first. So now I'll go back outside, it'll have the wheels washed down with a wheel acid, bodywork wiped down. Then I'll go into the other room, it'll get a machine polish, 
valet inside and then photographed. By the time I've done all that, I'm confident this will look as good as that CRV did. So in this market, it should be one that people go for straight away. Now the Focus, just got it back from Moors. I did drive it home last night, spoiler alert. So it has been put back together again. So if you remember, we bought this from BCA car auctions. One of the only cars we bought from auctions recently. I bought it because the condition was really good. I don't need to do any body work on it. I did bid with £2,000 margin in, which normally you won't win a car from BCA with £2,000 margin in. That's gross. So before all the costs. And it got here. And I think you know, some of you will have seen it on camera already. Really, really good condition. Nice spec. It drove really nicely, but what I noticed was when I stopped and I had a look in the engine bay, I could see bubbling in the coolant tank, which is always a sign that something's awry. And it was doing a funny sort of cutout limp mode thing every now and then. Well, what it turned out to be was uh, what we thought it was, was the head gasket. So we took the head off, that went down to Barham Engines, and they skimmed the head for us. And then it went back down to Moore's. Obviously, having had the head off, we had to redo the cam belt. If we're doing the cam belt, we've got to do the water pump, we've got to do the tensioners. We also thought it, within the coolant bottle, we found like an additive someone had used to try and fix the head gasket. So we were worried about that having clogged things up. So we also put a new radiator in it as well, put it all back together, and then found that the fuel filter needed replacing. Since then, I've done a couple of journeys in it. It drives absolutely bang on the temperature, exactly where it is. There's no more bubbling in the uh, coolant bottle. It's a really, really nice drive, but it has cost me. Let's go and have a look at the numbers. I will note, before I'm putting the car up for sale, I'm going to do probably about 300 miles minimum, just to double check. Everything's okay, and obviously a lot's gone back together again. Check there's no problems with it, so it won't be going up for sale just yet. Luckily, it doesn't need too much prep, but I don't think I'm going to make any money out of it. So this obviously isn't totally complete yet. I've had to put a couple of things in that I assume that I'm going to have to do. Well, I know I'm going to have to do. So first of all, we bought it for 3344. Now, the auto trader price for it is 5K. So that normally would have been good margin for a car, a like decent margin. It wasn't 2K, whether it was 1700, wasn't it? But that included delivery as well. So I think it was about two before the delivery. So we had to buy a thermostat for it, had to buy the timing belt kit for it, I had to get a radiator from eBay, can't remember exactly how much it was, I'll have to fill it in later, I think it was around about £100. The full service kit, because obviously we had to do oil oil filter when we did that as well, changed out the air filter as well. We had the head skimmed down at Barham Engine, then the bill for Moores was £732, so that included investigate the coolant, uh, head gasket failure, remove cylinder head, Repair block, rebuild with new bolts, gaskets, because obviously you've got all the new bolts and gaskets need to go down on it as well. Timing belt, tensioners, water pump, radiator, antifreeze, thermostat, engine and oil filter. They've got fuel pressure code, so they had to replace, replace, replace the fuel filter. There was 14 hours of labour, I think, on that one. Yeah, 14 hours of labour. So a hefty, hefty bill. So all of it, then you've got, uh, then I've still got to put a warranty on it. I'm going to have to put a really good warranty on it just to be 100%. And then there's the advert cost. So, so total cost 4773.95. Sale price, so if I do sell for auto trader price, 4995. The gross margin I pay the VAT on, which is obviously the difference between buying the car here and selling it. doesn't take into account any of these other costs at all. So the uh, gross uh, margin is £1,650, so I've got to pay £275 of that, which means my net profit is minus £54. If I add back in the VAT that I can reclaim, £200, I'm left with a net of £146. So at best, that car will be a break-even, and that's only if it doesn't actually uh, cost me any more afterwards. And I haven't done the MOT yet, actually. No, it won't be. I've got to do an MOT on it as well. It's going to be a minus going to be a minus that one unfortunately guys you got to take the hit every now and then but this is why people message me all the time and say when do you think consumers will be able to buy at auction again well the trouble with it is is that uh, if a, cons a business sells to a consumer consumer rights comes into an act i haven't got any recourse at all with the auction house on this and this is the kind of thing you can have happen to you guys now you could have saved a bit of money by doing this work yourself but the you know it has easily taken me if it took them 14 hours you can easily say I'd probably end up taking a whole week doing something like that. Um, in the meantime, things like the Honda, you saw how quickly I clean that, wash it, get it sold. Um, and you've seen other cars similar. 
it wouldn't make any sense me tying up that time to save 700 pounds because i could flip two or three other cars in the meantime so the focus is going to go out the door as an excellent car i mean again <laughs> you know that you could go and buy that car privately off someone's driveway, drive it away, you'd probably be okay for a couple of days without noticing that issue, and then you'd have been on the hook for doing that repair, and you might have saved maybe five or six hundred pounds maximum versus a trade's price. Trouble is, Auto Trader says that's four nine nine five. Thing is, there'll be a raft of focuses there. There's no way of communicating really, other than in the description that you've done this level of work. And again, most people, like we're talking about with the Honda probably would rather save some money and not really think about you know oh the one i'm looking at hasn't had a cam belt done i'm gonna to have to have that done i mean a cam belt change alone is going to cost you 500 pounds isn't it on one of these so i'd have thought 500 pounds easy and then you've got your oil and filter on top of that so yeah with the full service including the oil and filter you'd be at 500 pounds so when you're looking at cars you really do need to look at every element of it if you're buying one cheaper that hasn't had the work done, you're going to have to get it done at some point. It might not be now, but it might be in a year's time. You're going to have to put your hands in a pocket and spend that kind of cash getting everything done. So we've just got to hope we can get out of it alive on this one. And that's auction cars for you guys. It's a total roll of the dice, really. Obviously, if I'd been there live to see it, then I could have possibly noticed what the problem was. But the thing with it is... I could have sat there all day, not bought a thing, and wasted the entire day. And uh, if I did that every single auction, the amount of time I'd waste would be huge. Well, we got interrupted there for a minute because a very kind subscriber popped by with some lights for the little Micra down on holiday. They've had loads of these Micras and they had these kicking around in the garage, um, both this side. So I can decide which one I like them more. Apparently you let this stuff get all warm and gooey because you've done it so many times and then put it back around the bead there and seal it back in place Which is ideal because I think we might get an MOT on this So thanks ever so much. I don't use names as always unless um, someone specifically said it's okay too But enjoy your holiday and thanks for popping down with those it's great stuff Everybody's loving the micro so much. We're getting so much advice and help with it It's gonna definitely live again. The next thing for this is other than me desperate wanting to polish it, is to disconnect the MAF sensor because so many of you said they think it's an you think it's an engine performance thing, not a gearbox thing. And a very common one is the MAF failing. So if we disconnect it and drive it without that connected and see if the performance is any different, that'll give us an indicator of if we're we're onto something there or not. But we've got other pressing things right now unfortunately. Which is we have to focus on what's going to make us money because we need to counteract that. So we need to get this BMW. I say we, you guys aren't helping me, unfortunately. I'd be a lot quicker if you were, I guess. <laughs> so I need to get cracking and get the polish up done and get the photo shoot done. So against specific instructions, Mark has popped by with Fox's biscuits. I said on Instagram, no more biscuits. People will be bringing me biscuits. But Mark's popped by with these XR. It's an XR3i, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it says it right there. Cabrio. How long have you had it for, Mark? 19 years. 19 years and how many miles was it again 100 and... 117,000 that is some gloss you've got on that black isn't it yeah. where'd you come up from today with the Tiverton did you say yeah, cool you don't see many of these around what I also love is the Recaros you just don't see enough Recaros anymore do you but yeah this is bang out order no more biscuits everyone so that's the BMW all prepped, photographed, videoed. As I expected, it's come out mint. It really has. It's a one owner car with a full service history. The main dealer, it's the local main dealership there on the number plate. The car hasn't really gone very far at all. Only done 50,000 miles, so it was always gonna come out clean, but it's come out really, really clean. Interior is immaculate. nothing to know at all in there bodywork is absolutely bang on there's no scrapes or dings to note at all on it alloys are all in good nick got michelins all the way around now when i took this car out i was impressed with it but obviously for the video i do a bit more research to find out more information about the car and the stats are pretty impressive this will do naught to 60 in seven seconds and gone to do over 140 mile an hour 
The big thing is 280 foot pound of torque low down in the rev range, so massive punch power. And as we can see from the truck computer, it's like doing 58 miles to the gallon. So it might possibly be the most perfect car you could have as a family car because obviously rear wheel drive as well, so the handling's awesome. So you can get everybody around in it during the week and then when you want to go out and have a hoon, you can. But the incredible thing, 30 pound road tax. Yes, I got the V5 out, I ran the V5 through uh, the online tax thing. 30 pound road tax. So 0 to 60 in seven seconds, 140 miles an hour plus. Fantastic handling. 30 pound road tax and 50 miles to the gallon plus. Well, obviously, probably not if you use all of that power. So you you can't help people people for liking BMWs, you really can't. Obviously there's always the fear of expensive repairs, but there is with any of the vehicles to be honest. There's not a car I can list to you where I haven't had a message saying, watch out for this, watch out for that, watch out for the other. You can only take them as they are. This is a fantastic service history. It's got low miles. It's been incredibly well looked after. I mean, things like the matching Michelins all the way around, they do give you that indicator. The person had the car wasn't running on a budget. Yeah, so Auto Trader recommended for this is nine grand, so it's going to go up at eight nine nine five, and we'll see how I get on. So, guys, that's the end of the week, and it's ended with a bit of a scary call. Uh, some of you might remember we sold a Mitsubishi ASX a little while ago. Had a call um, from Mr. Steve over in Torrington. Shout out to Mr. Steve. If anybody watching him knows, says the customers come in uh, to put a warranty claim in for the drive shaft. Well, not for the drive shaft. The ABS light was on. Mr. Steve checked it. There's an issue with the ABS that needs the drive shaft replacing. Only place he can get it from, Mitsubishi. £800. So, put that in comparison to the Volvo, we're doing both drive shafts. Both drive shafts and the Volvo, I think, is going to cost in the region of about, I think, about £200 for the two drive shafts. So, £800 for one drive shaft. On another more positive note, had an email from warranty wise today they've approved the repair on the volvo now i only claim for one drive shaft because it's only one that's really bad the other one we're doing because it's got a bit of play in it we decided to do both sides i can't claim because it hasn't failed and they're going to pay for the one side of paying for diagnosis and fitting and for the drive shaft they've approved that so that's a bit more of a positive but hopefully they approved the drive shaft on the mitsubishi i don't see any reason they shouldn't because it's an abs issue and that is covered by the warranty but I imagine any warranty company is going to probably look twice as paying £800 for one drive shaft. So I hope you enjoyed this. Just a bit of an update on what's been going on. Nothing major, particular video. Just more of an update on a day-to-day -day sort of blog of trading. Still got lots on to do. Hopefully get in Monday morning, get the Renault Clio now. It's come back advisory free MOT with a set of new tyres on the front of it. Cleaned, ready for the lady to come and pick up. So yeah, get that ready. Then get the D Dacia and... I need to get that Nissan cleaned up for sale because I think that's going to sell pretty quickly as soon as I advertise it. Cash guys do, and it's a seven-seater, so probably need to prioritise that one next, I'd have thought. Get up and running. Do want to get on for the micro, as I said. But yeah, first thing Monday morning, get on to the cash guy. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Oh, and for those of you that have spotted it, we will discuss this purchase in the next video. I bought a broken car. We need to see if I can get out of this one alive too.